Hi, and welcome to Better Code Today. My name's Tim Neal, and today I'm going to be talking about the iDisposable interface. iDisposable must be about my favorite interface in the .NET framework. It's used to provide a mechanism for developers to control when and how a class tears itself down when it's no longer needed. Although a finalizer performs a similar role, these only run when the garbage collector chooses to collect that class. This isn't as soon as the object reference is set to null or the object goes out of scope, but at some point an unknown length of time in the future. And that can mean that resources may be tied up longer than necessary, potentially causing contention issues. A class that implements our disposable can be disposed by explicitly calling the dispose method. This can be useful when the scope of the disposable class extends beyond a single method. However, if the class is created and disposed in the same method, the C sharp language provides a much cooler mechanism the using construct. This will automatically call the dispose method when the object goes out of scope, even if an exception occurs. It's worth noting that the disposal object doesn't have to be created in the using statement. It's perfectly valid to put a method or property that returns the object in there, although that can complicate matters and risk causing issues if other code attempts to use the object after it has been disposed. This code is roughly equivalent to what's generated by the using construct. As you can see, dispose will always be called unless somehow the object has been set to null before the end of the code block. You'll also see that the using construct is much cleaner and more readable than doing it the hard way. So let's have a look at how we can implement the iDisposable interface in our own code. This is the recommended implementation of iDisposable as provided by Microsoft, and if you use any code analysis tools, you may find that they will also push you towards this approach. Let's have a look at some of the features of the class. You'll see there's a boolean flag to monitor whether the dispose method has been called yet. Although Microsoft recommend that dispose is only called once on an object, they also recommend that dispose is implemented so that it can handle scenarios where the first recommendation is ignored. Next you'll see the iDisposable dispose method itself. It's calling a protected dispose method with the disposing parameter true and then calling gc suppress finalize. This last call will tell the garbage collector not to bother running the finalizer when it collects the object. And as you'll see, this makes sense because if dispose is called at some point, then there will be nothing for the finalizer to do. The finalizer also calls a protected dispose method, but passes the disposing parameter as false. This setup ensures that the protected dispose method gets called all the time, regardless of whether anything explicitly calls the iDisposable dispose method. If you look at the protected, dispose method, you'll see a few things. Firstly, that it's a virtual method. So that means that any classes that derive from our disposable class can override this method. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to override the our disposable dispose method or the finalizer because these are only calling into the dispose method. So if you want to change anything, if your child class has additional dependencies, that need disposing, then it would make sense to override the dispose method and do it in there. You'll also see that if the disposing parameter is true, as it is when it's called from the iDisposable dispose method, then manage objects and unmanaged objects will be cleaned up. If the disposing parameter is false, as when it's called from the finalizer, then manage objects will be ignored and only the unmanaged objects will be cleaned up. This is because the finalizer is only ever called by the garbage collector and the garbage collector already has mechanisms in place for disposing any managed objects. So it's only the unmanaged objects that would need to be destroyed in this situation. So to finish implementing the iDisposable interface correctly, all we need to do is end a code to clean up our managed resources as indicated and code to clean up our unmanaged resources indicated here. And that's where I have a problem with this approach, or at least with the claim that this is the only correct implementation. Although I have wanted to use iDisposable a number of times in my own code, I've never needed to use it to dispose of unmanaged resources. I personally just never use them in c -sharp code. If you happen to use them in your code, then fantastic, this is a great pattern to use. If not, um, well, let's, let's break it down a bit. So if we didn't have any unmanaged resources, if we remove this section, then in fact, there's no point having this if block. So we can remove that as well. And in that case, there's no point having the disposing parameter either. So we can remove that. 
you'll now see that we get an error because we have two dispose methods with the same signature. So we should probably merge the two here. What we can do is take the contents from that method and drop it into the public one. And now we don't need the protected one at all. However, it might make sense to make the public method virtual just in case we are going to have any child classes. Because we're no longer disposing any unmanaged objects, we don't need to have the finalizer do anything. So we can remove that as well. And if we don't have a finalizer, then there's no point calling the suppress finalize method either. And this, I think, is a much more sensible implementation of the iDisposable pattern for the majority of cases. And it's the one that I use time and time again in my own code. So all you'd need to do to complete this is enter your code for tearing down the managed objects as indicated. So what should we be disposing in our dispose method? Definitely unmanaged resources. But if you're like me, you're probably not using any. After that, any private fields belonging to the class that themselves implement iDisposable should be considered. This includes any number of built-in .NET classes, including streams and database connections, and really anything that may cause issues if it hangs around for longer than you really need it. Also, any of your own classes that implement iDisposable can be disposed here. Once you start using the interface, you may be surprised at how quickly it spreads and how many times you actually find yourself using it. I also find it useful to detach event handlers in the dispose method. Although this is not strictly necessary, if you don't do this, then the object will remain in scope and reacting to fired events until the event publisher goes out of scope, which may not be what you want. However, you should be careful not to dispose any objects that may go on to be used elsewhere. If your class instantiates the object internally and never exposes it externally, then it's definitely safe to dispose it. If the object is passed into your class on the constructor or any other method or exposed externally through a method or property, then you at least need to do some investigation to determine which class is the primary user of the object, or at least where it's used last and make sure it gets disposed there. It's also not normally necessary to do anything with classes that don't implement iDisposable. Setting fields to null or any other default value is just going to clutter up your code. It won't provide any real benefits, so save yourself the time and just don't bother. And that's all for this video. If you've enjoyed it, please take the time to subscribe to our channel or follow us on Twitter. If you have any thoughts or comments or things you'd like to see in future videos, please let us know. Thanks for watching.